Welcome back everyone to the two guys at a cooler channel. Today we are going to be making our version of Spam. This product came into existence in 1937 and really gained its popularity in World War II. Now it's a global product popular in Hawaii and Asia. The ingredients of Spam has never been a secret. Pork, water, potato starch, salt, sugar, and sodium nitrite. And as we look at the side of the can, we notice that it does have a fair amount of salt in it, 750 milligrams of salt. And as of today, April 2020, this can cost me $3.25. So let's make some spam, but better. Does Josh own that? Okay, anyway, we're actually gonna be using ham. This is the Kulatello part of the hind leg, AKA the ham. This is premium meat. And as you can see, it's partially frozen. We're just gonna go ahead and cut this up into uh, manageable pieces for our grinder. Now, originally they did use pork shoulder as that was considered less desirable and who knows what they use today. In addition to actual ham, we're gonna be using back fat. So I'm gonna cut that into small chunks, ready for the grinder. Now what we wanna do is we wanna weigh out our meat and our fat, and if you want the recipe, check out the description box below. I've got a link that'll take you right to it. In order to make Spam better, there's a couple things we need to fix. Number one is the texture. I want the texture to be luxurious. We need to fix the amount of salt that goes in it, also the type of spices that are added, and then finally, how juicy is this product gonna be? Well, let's start with the spices. First in, we're gonna be using some sea salt, and next we're gonna be adding some sodium nitrite or Instacure number one. That's gonna give it that nice cured hammy flavor. Uh, we wanna come back with a little bit of black pepper. Next, we're gonna add a little granulated sugar. This is turbinado sugar. We're gonna come back with some garlic powder and some onion powder. For a smoky, spicy kick, we're gonna add some chipotle powder, and then finally, we're gonna add Potato starch. Now, potato starch is an interesting ingredient. This is used for binding the meat together, moisture retention, all that really good stuff. If you don't happen to have potato starch, you can also use corn starch. It does the same exact thing. Our very last ingredient in this spam is gonna be ice cold water with little ice chips still in it. We're gonna actually emulsify our mints to create that really velvety finishing product. And let's move on to grinding. Before I grind my meat, I wanna take the temperature. I wanna keep it partially frozen, and the process of grinding itself is gonna heat the meat up just a little bit. So we wanna make sure that everything is really chilled. In this case, 29 degrees, 30 degrees, absolutely perfect. And I'm gonna go ahead and grind this on a couple different plates. Our first grind's gonna see a 10 millimeter plate, and then we're gonna grind it again on a four and a half millimeter plate. And between each grinds, I'm gonna make sure that our mince is once again partially frozen, otherwise it's gonna smear the fat. Now, technically, after this grind right here, this is the four and a half millimeter grind, we could go ahead and stop. Grinding our meat twice is gonna provide a nice clean product, but it's still gonna be a little dense. We're gonna take this to the next level by emulsifying it, and to emulsify it, we need a food processor with blades that are razor sharp and a motor that's strong enough to bring the fat and the protein particles together into one cohesive paste. And that's really what we're looking for. This is a tricky process. Temperature is everything. If it gets too hot, our emulsion will break, the fat and the proteins won't bind together properly, and you're gonna end up with a product that has a very undesirable texture. My mince is partially frozen, and we're gonna go ahead and place it in our food processor. I'm gonna be doing this in batches. So my first batch is gonna go in, we're gonna go ahead and add half of our seasoning mix and then place the top back on our food processor. With everything in place, we're just gonna pulse our mincemeat. And as we pulse our mincemeat, I'm gonna be adding that ice cold water just a little bit at a time. Adding this water along with some of the ice is gonna help the emulsion process. It's gonna keep everything very, very cold. And you're gonna slowly start to notice that it's gonna turn from ground pork into a paste. And when you're done, if you've done it right, your paste should look homogenous. There should be no distinguishable signs of fat and meat. This is the hardest step in this particular recipe, and if you can nail it, I'm telling you, you're gonna end up with an awesome product. Let's go ahead and stuff it into our casing.
now that our Spam is in its casing, we're gonna put that in a vacuum seal bag and remove all the air from it. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna cook this very gently, low and slow, 140 degrees Fahrenheit for roughly about two hours in a water bath. And this gentle cooking process is gonna set our emulsion. We're not gonna leak out any of our fats and it's gonna give us an incredibly juicy and tender product when we pan sear it in a minute. After two hours, it's time to take our Spam out of the sous vide water bath and we're gonna go ahead and put it in an ice bath to really shock it and to bring that temperature down really fast. And after about 30 or so minutes inside an ice bath, let's go ahead and open it up. As I give it a quick smell, it smells incredible. It has a Spam-like smell, but it doesn't smell processed. It has a very fresh quality to it. So here we go. We're gonna unwrap our version of Spam first before we get into the commercially bought one. And my first impressions are very positive. The texture itself has firmed up quite a bit. The smells are incredible. Uh, let me go ahead and give it a quick cut. And you can almost feel the delicate nature of the emulsified meat that's come together, almost like a, a mousselin of sorts. As we're going to go ahead and cut off a slice, prepare to fry it up alongside of some commercially bought Spam. And now we're going to go ahead and get into the can of Spam. First thing I'm noticing is that their color is a little pinker than mine. As I flip the can over and uh, pop out the Spam block, then uh, I'm noticing also that the texture is a little more firm. The smell coming from the Spam is very typical Spam smell. Think like Vienna sausage, processed meat kind of smell. And now it's time to fry up both patties and see what they taste like. All right, the moment we've all been waiting for, both Spams cooked the exact same amount of time. The one on the left is the commercially obtained Spam, Spam in a can. The one on the right is the Spam that we made here fresh. As I'm cutting into both Spams, I can feel a texture difference. And although the one on the left doesn't look juicy by comparison, it actually is relatively juicy. We get a little closer shot right here and do a little squeeze. You can see that it is glistening with some of the juices that are still inside. The flavor of Spam hasn't changed in over 80 years. It's a really consistent product. Uh, it is spiced. It, you do get that hammy flavor. It's very salty, and that's typical with canned meats that you don't have to cook. You know, it's part of the preservation technique. Let's go ahead and taste our homemade version. And one of the issues that we wanted to work on was the texture as well as moisture retention. And I'm very pleased to see both of those. I've got juices flowing out of it. The texture is velvety, very pillowy, very delicate. The spice profile is complex. You got the pepper, the garlic, the onion, even the chipotle powder adds a, a nice depth of flavor to this Spam. And that's how you make Spam at home better than the store-bought stuff for less money. Thanks for watching. Let's take a quick second to thank the patrons of the channel. Thank you guys for your support. If you like what you see and you wanna support our work, check out the description box below and click on that Patreon link. If you're new to our channel, we wanna say welcome. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, share. We got venison salami. We got the world's hottest pepper salami coming up. We've got Land Jaeger, all kinds of really great stuff on the horizon. Thanks again. We'll see you in the next one.